Henry Monroe Wright began his ministerial career in 1964 after earning a Bachelor of Arts in Religion from Oakwood College. He further qualified himself for the ministry by obtaining a Master of Systematic Theology degree from Andrews University in 1965. Sensing the need for additional training, Wright received a Master of Divinity degree from Methodist Theological Seminary in 1978. He attended Vanderbilt University from 1979 to 1981 for postgraduate studies in church administration. He has received more than 50 awards and recognition for pastoral leadership, preaching, and evangelism. While being blessed throughout their ministry, Wright has been married to his wife, Carol, since 1966. They were gifted with three sons and now have four grandchildren. Please welcome Henry Wright. Good evening, everybody. Did you have a good day? Has it been a good camp? I consider it a, an honor and a privilege to be a part of the team of speakers and presenters that have been used by God's Spirit during this time we've had together. I'm going to ask the brethren to put my passage for tonight on the screen right now, if you would, from Mark 5, verses 21 through 23. Thank you so very, very much. Tomorrow morning, My subject will be God's Word Shaping Our Story. I have liked, um, Elder Cano, that word shaping, it's an present progressive verb suggesting that the shaping of the Word of God is ongoing. You agree with that? Yeah, yeah it is. God, even as we sit here right now, is shaping us through his word. And then tomorrow evening, uh, a sermon entitled, The Touch of Elisha's Bones. And tomorrow night, I'm going to talk about the Holy Spirit Amen. to close our time together. Let's read the opening passage together, everybody. And behold... One of the rulers. Now pause. 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 No, 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 no. Just, just take it easy. The operative word is ruler. And now one of the rulers of the synagogue. And my subject tonight is simply ruler. Read on. Came, Jairus by name. Everybody's reading. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet and begged him earnestly, saying, My little daughter lies at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her, that she may be healed. Hmm. Let's pray. We need your help, Lord. Amen. I have... I've enjoyed reading the Bible the past six and a half years in a different way. I used to do that, um, read the Bible through a, uh, through a, in a year kind of thing. You've done that. Six chapters a day, something like that. Go from Genesis 1 to Revelation 22 in a year. I did that for years. And then uh, Elder Wilson and the brethren challenged us before the last general conference to read the Bible a chapter a day. And, and, and my wife and I got locked into that, and I tell you, it was such a blessing to me. Because, and I consider myself a, a, a Bible student, not necessarily a scholar, but a Bible student. Yeah, I, I do the Greek thing and the Hebrew thing, but I'm a Bible student. I don't consider myself a scholar. But in teaching, preaching for years, I have taught young pastors to, 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 to understand and present the Bible contextually, what comes before, what comes after, who's the writer, what's the book, what's the testament, so forth and so on. Reading the Bible through a chapter a day has opened the Scriptures to me in a new way. Because now I'm able to each morning, and I'm in Galatians right now, feast, I'm in Ephesians, 
start with Ephesians this morning. Feast on that chapter, what came before, what came after, and things are opening up for me. And this passage, wow. The Bible has a way of saying a big thing in a few words. And, and, and this word ruler, bam, get me, ruler. And, and it's interesting, in this narrative, he, he's only called by name once, Jairus. Every other time, he's, he's ruler. He's He's, he's ruler. Uh, look over in, in, in Mark 5, and if you got your Bible or your phone, <laughs> may the Lord have mercy. Oh, forgive me, Jesus. Uh, verse 35, as the narrative continues, it says, while he was still speaking, some came from the ruler of the synagogue. And it's like, it's like Mark, and this is the memories of Peter, is going out of his way now not to call his name again. He's focusing on the fact that this guy is a ruler. And then again, toward the end of the narrative, in, in verse 38, then he came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue. And so I've called this sermon ruler. Why, why this emphasis on the idea of ruling? Ruling. Well, it's in the passage. Go back to the passage, brethren. Put, put it on the screen again. Go back to the passage. Let, let's see that again. You ready? Now, you, you, your brain is beginning now to cook the grease, so let us go. Here we go. Come on, everybody. And behold, one of the rulers, okay, of the synagogue came. Come on, you can read. Come on. Sorry. Right. Jairus by name. That's the last time his name's going to be called. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet and begged him earnestly, saying, My little daughter lies at the point of death. Come. He's telling Jesus how to do the healing. Come on, come on, somebody, stay awake. This brother got it. I'll preach to him for a few minutes. He, he, he got it. <laughs> now, notice, notice, he falls to his knees. He's in a posture of humility, an attitude of prayer. He has a, 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 a bearing of, of, of suppliance and uh, supplicant and, 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 and asking and 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 and. and but even on his knees, praying, he's telling God, come lay your hands on her. Well, Jesus, you, you, you read the experience in Matthew 8. You read it. You read it. Remember when the centurion came? He said, you don't even need to come to my house. Remember that? Did anybody read that? Jesus said, I haven't seen that kind of faith anywhere. He gave Christ no instruction. He said, he said look, I, I tell folks to come and go. You're in, you're in charge here. You're ruling here, the centurion said. Just speak the word. But this fellow, on his knees, tells Jesus, come, lay, heal like he's some neophyte <laughs> at healing. He has, he has raised the dead. He has, he has touched the blind. He has, he has brought the crippled back to walking. He has uh, unstopped the deaf's ears. He has, he has all, uh, 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 but, but this guy is going to tell him how to do it. We are rulers. See, Lord, I, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for a mate. I'm looking for a mate. Send him tall, dark, and handsome. God has in mind fat, short, and kind. <laughs> Jesus. 
but we, listen to me, we use prayer often as a directive, not a request. Buying God off with posture, eyes wet with tears, knees bent, body shaking, but telling God what to do. Is anybody listening to this sermon so far? And that thing hit me, and I said, wait, wait, Henry Wright is in this passage. I don't want to be, but I'm there. We're there. Now, let's just be honest for a few minutes. There's not a person here listening to me who's an adult who at some point in your life has not wanted to be in charge. Oh, don't be all pious now. Look, try to be all humble. You, 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 we, 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 like, we like being in charge. Now, if you study the temperaments, the, 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 um, the choleric, the bossy person, the melancholic, the organized person, the, 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 the sanguine, the lighthearted person, the phlegmatic, the quiet person, you know that, you know that on that, 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 that left side of the brain, we have the choleric and the melancholic. Those are the people that like to run things take charge of things. But every, every, every uh, uh, temperament has a, has a tendency toward being in charge, wanting to have the last say, wanting to win. And, 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 and we saw this, we saw this when we jumped to Genesis, the third chapter, and, 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 and Satan is tempting Eve and, and, and Adam, and he says, ye shall be like gods. Remember that? What is God? Ruler. Ruler. You shall be as like God. You will take charge. You will take charge. Ladies and gentlemen, let me announce at the beginning of the sermon that sin renders you unable to be in charge. Sinners can't run anything. Look at what we've done to the planet. Look at what we have done to the church. And so here he is. Now, now, the ruler of the synagogue, he was like a, maybe like an elder or, or head deacon or somebody like that. He opened the synagogue. He took charge of the service. He made sure that things went, went, went right. But Jairus was used to things going the way he wanted them to go. He was absolutely comfortable being in charge. And so when this sickness came, to his daughter. Suddenly, he was helpless because this little 12-year-old girl who had been the joy of his life, and, and, and many scholars, and I believe they're correct, believe she must have been his only child because normally in Jewish economy, a girl wouldn't have meant that much but in that day, but, but, but she's precious to him. And, and, and 12 years of, 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 of parties and kisses and squeals and hugs. And I, frankly, I, I had three boys. I have, I have often envied men who have daughters. Tried three times, missed three times. <laughs> and I, I, I like to watch men with their daughters and the way the daughter holds the hand and looks up to daddy. It's just a, 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 if you're a man, if you're a man with a daughter, raise your hand right now. You got a daughter, raise your hand. I'm so jealous of you. Get your hand on, I'm so jealous of you. <laughs> He had this girl, and he comes home one day, and mama says, there's something wrong. The breathing is heavy. Her eyes are, are, are red, and, and there's perspiration on her brow, and we need the physician. And they tried, and they tried, and they tried, and nothing was working. He could not rule this situation. He could not do it. And he heard that Jesus was coming, and, and, and desperate as he was, he felt, well, at least I can go there. I've heard some things about this man, what he, what he has done, what he has accomplished, the, the, the deeds that surround him, the, the Spirit of God seems to be upon him. Let me find this Jesus. And he has no idea that Jesus has just come from across the Galilean Sea where their great miracles have taken place. And, and so when Jesus comes, he's a part of the crowd and, and pushes through. He doesn't ask permission. He pushes through falls before Christ on his knees and, and makes his 
request. To the Lord. Not Jer Jer Jairus, Jairus should be glad that, that I'm not Jesus. <laughs> because if you're coming to me, I'm confessing my sins, you're coming to me asking for help. You don't tell me how to help you. <laughs> Ask, shut up, <laughs> let me take care of it. Is anybody with me? Yeah, yeah all right, good, some honest people here. Yeah, yeah. If you're asking for help, then act like you need help. So he better be glad it wasn't me. I said, excuse, excuse, excuse me, excuse, 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 excuse me. Uh, what's your name again? Jairus. Uh, uh, you do the asking. I'll do the healing. I'll, I'll, I'll handle this. But Jesus, sweet Jesus, ladies and gentlemen, we ought to give Jesus an amen right now. Amen. Look at Jesus. Look at the Spirit of Jesus. So verse 24, he does, now Christ does not answer him. He doesn't tell him what he needs to hear. It says, Christ went with him. Amen. Here's why. Because Jesus was about to shape this brother's story. Amen. All of a sudden, the narrative shifts after verse 24. Leaves Jairus altogether. Look at verse 25. Now a certain woman. All of a sudden, this woman is injected into the story. And, and, and I find this very interesting because Christ now, because if you read this Our Vages, you know that Jesus actually walked in such a way so that he, Jesus knew the woman was trying to reach him. So he walked, oh, I'm trying to be calm. He walked in such a way that the woman could reach him. Amen. I'm sorry, I can't say that calm. Jesus altered his footsteps, altered his direction, changed his flow because he knew somebody in need was coming and he was saying to Jairus in a very silent way, you ain't the only one who's got problems. I can take care of more than one person at the same time. Don't ever come to God like you're the only one in need. Jesus is running planets, taking care of suns, controlling comets. He can handle your problem, my problem, everybody's problem at the same time. Thank you, Lord. You can't send Jesus too many prayers at the same time. Isn't that something? Why am I the only one excited here? I serve a God who can handle billions of problems at the same time. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! And so Jesus bends his steps. For this woman. Now, get the picture. You're in the sermon with me now. Where's Jairus? He's, he's right beside Jesus. And I believe, preacher's imagination, I told you I have one. I believe that Jesus, that Jairus has his, his hand on Jesus' elbow. Yeah, let's get to it here. I did all the stuff I was supposed to do. I knelt. I beseeched. <laughs> I asked humbly with a groveling spirit, let's get the healing done. Get on to my house like I told you. <laughs> Put your hands on her as I instructed you. Let's have a healing here. He's pushing. Jesus is bending the wrong way because he's got to hook up his robe. Hey! He's got to hook up his robe with this woman's fingertips. Hallelujah. And so the woman touches and, 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 uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Verse 27, when she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, if only I may touch his clothes, I, sh I shall be made, I should be made well. Now, verse 29, Mark's favorite word, immediately. <laughs> immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction now watch it watch it my brother Jairus is so wrapped up in himself 
he doesn't notice that Jesus is helping somebody else. Watch yourself. Listen to me carefully. Many times, the trouble you have is so Jesus can heal somebody else. I know that's a hard one for you to grasp, so I'll say it again, and then I'll help you say amen. Many times, the trouble you have is so Jesus can help somebody else. Amen. See, so we get so self-centered, so self-focused when we have trouble. God, listen to me. God may be trusting you with the problem so he can help somebody else. Don't let him down. Wear it with courage. Wear it with faith. Wear it with determination. Trust God that if he brings it, he's going to help you handle it. Amen. Jesus immediately anointed himself, verse 30, that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, now, about this time, Jairus is about to have a heart attack. <laughs> See, there's this crowd, there's this, a lot of people bumping and shoveling and, and pushing against him, and Jesus says, who, who touched me? <laughs> now, Jairus right now, he's, he's biting his tongue off. He wants to say, what did you say? Who touched me? And the disciples speak before Jairus can. The disciples say, you see the multitude thronging, and you say, who touched me? I hear Jairus saying, yeah, 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 somebody, need, somebody needs to ask that question, because this makes no sense to me. See, rulers like to stay on schedule. No, I enjoy the brethren back there who run this program. <laughs> Pastor, when they get to so-and-so in the song, step into the hole, and as they're finishing up, walk out to the platform. <laughs> get to the platform, the clock will start. I, I, I like people. That's all fine. That's fine. That's all right. It's fine. fine. Rulers like schedules. <laughs> now, I'm confessing my sins. If you visited my church when I was pastoring, there's a platform manager, I do the exact same thing. Rulers like schedules. One of the things you're going to learn in the last, one, th one of the things you're going to learn in the last days is that everything is going to be done only on God's schedule. And he's preparing you for that now. That's why some things you pray for, for don't happen when you want them to happen. Some things you do fall apart because Jesus is, see, so, so, some, some of you are going to live till Jesus comes. Hey, there are folks sitting here now who will never close their eyes, and before Jesus comes, you're going to learn to rest on his schedule when he says it, how he says it. Hallelujah. And so Jesus says, who touched me? Now, and Jairus is being shaped now. He's being shaped. Look at verse 32. And he looked around to see her who came and who had done this thing. But the woman, verse 33, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him, and told him the, and told him the, now, ladies, I don't want to be too rough on you, but when a lady decides to tell, the whole truth, can I get a witness, brethren, in this house? When the sister decides to tell you all that happened, she got to put her hand on her hip, 
and tell you how the hand weighed and how the, how the eyes looked, how the tone of the voice was and what she said when he did it. And you're sitting there, the poor husband, saying, Lord, give me strength for this hour. Because <laughs> she's telling all of it. And women are detailed. They, you know, we brother, we, we, we shorten it up. But the woman's going to give the full, look at the brother. They, they, they're saying, thank you, pastor. Thank you, thank you, thank you. They're going to tell the whole thing. And so, and, and this lady has been sick for 12 years, y'all. And the Bible says she told the what? Oh, the Jairus is about to have five babies. He's standing there and he's, <laughs> amen, sister. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. And Jesus is just as calm. Jesus is, Jesus is just as calm. Thank you, Lord, for remaining calm in the midst of my anxiety. Thank you, Lord, for not getting rattled when I get rattled. Thank you, Lord, for seeing the whole picture when I can't see the next minute. Hallelujah. She tells the whole story. <laughs> there are times that I have sought the Lord for something, only to discover, listen to the sentence, only to discover that it's not the answer that is important, but it's the seeking and the waiting that's important. Amen. See, God is a God of process. He's renovating us. We are by nature, my friend, rulers, every last one of us. And so many times, you're praying. We're focused on the answer. God is focused on the praying. Did you follow that? In other words, your act of seeking him, my friend, your act of seeking God, that's what's really strengthening you. He, folk, he can handle the answer. There's nothing God can't do, but the seeking builds us. Remember, we are, we are shaped by the Word, and the words of our prayers shape us because the purpose of prayer is not to get God to do anything, but to get us to do what God is going, get us to accept what God is going to do. He is fit to be tied. And then, verse 34, Jesus, in no rush, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Now comes the words that shape. While he was still speaking, some came from the ruler of the synagogue's house who said, your daughter is dead. You see, young lady, at that moment, and not until that moment, could Jesus help Jairus. There's nothing to rule. The girl's dead. There's nothing to control. The girl's dead. Your efforts, your plans, your pleading, your praying, it's out of your hands now, Jairus. She's dead. And I, I see Jairus's hand drop from the elbow of Jesus. Tears begin to flow. And that's when Jesus says the shaping words. Do not be afraid. Only believe. Come on, church. Couldn't somebody say amen? amen. This is the shaping moment. Jairus, it has always been about me, not about you. 
Now what you need to do is relax. See, if I was writing this Bible in modern language, I would say that Jesus said to Jairus, take it easy, chill. <laughs> I got this! Oh, hallelujah! I got this! I can handle this. I want you to go home tonight with that burning in your mind. He's got it. I don't care what the issue is. He's got it. I don't care how long it's been. He's got it. He waited. He wouldn't have sent it if you didn't think you could handle it. He's got it. The answer's already ready. The answer was ready before you started praying. Chill! Stop wringing your hands and pacing the floor and worrying. You've asked the Lord. He'll do it. He'll take care of it. But his way, his schedule, on his time, his methodology, don't you ever again, Jairus, tell me where to go and heal. Amen. Jairus is so numb, I don't think he really hears. He's just kind of dragging along behind Jesus now. What did he say? He said, relax. Just believe. Oh. Okay. He's still going to the house. Now, Jairus is really out of it. His only daughter is dead. He's not sure what Jesus is up to. See, the thing I like about trusting the Lord believing in him is that we're dealing <laughs> we're dealing with a god folk i can't grasp him we're dealing with a god who knows the end from the beginning who twists molecules like rubber who who who, who can make grass purple if he desires who, who who can spin a planet and keep everybody on it from falling off he he, 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 can, he can breathe into a woman's womb and, 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 and a marola becomes a, a, a zygote and a, and a zygote becomes a, a fetus and a fetus becomes a baby and, 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 and the baby grows up to become a, 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 a man or a woman. God, God, he has no limits. I'm trying to tell you. Calm down, Henry. He has no limits. He has no limits. I cannot fathom him. I cannot grasp him. What am I going to learn? When I go to God, he's got it. He's dragging along. Jesus gets to the house and says a ridiculous thing. When he came in, he said to them, he didn't say be comforted. He said, why are you crying? This is Jesus. I mean, this, this, is not, this, is not, this is not pastoral posture. You, 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 you don't go to the house of the deceased and ask, why are you crying? Folk, come on, read the story. This, this is not pastoral. Hey, Jesus, what, what, what seminary did you attend? You don't do that. The man's daughter is dead. You come in and say nice, soft things and how good God is and talk about whatever and, and you but you don't ask why you're crying of course we're crying the girl is dead Jesus <laughs> words are shaping Jairus so they made fun of Jesus they did not like his pastoral posture he put him out this, this is folks this is not pastoral you come in say the wrong thing folks get upset and you put them out See, 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 folk, pastor's trying to remind you tonight that when you put it in God's hands, God, God is not like us. See, 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 death is no problem for God. I wish y'all would say amen out there. Amen. See, when, when, when death comes, we think it's all over. When death comes, we think it's all done. Death is nothing to Jesus. What did he say about Lazarus? Oh, he's just asleep. Is he? Yeah, as far as I'm concerned, because all I got to do is speak, speak, and he comes up. You're crying. I don't need any crying. I need belief and faith and trust. You see, 
Jairus is about to find out the best news in the world. He prayed for a healing. God gave him a resurrection. Amen. Woo! Put your hands together and give God glory. He always, from the time, Pastor Cano, that Jarrah showed up, Jesus always had more in mind than he prayed for. You want to tall, dark, and handsome? You got short, fat, and sweet, and both of you are going to be saved. Hey, that's more than you asked for. Somebody say amen. Yeah! sir. The God we serve supplies according to our need. Your prayers were too narrow. You wanted a healing, Jairus. Your prayers were too faithful, faithless. You put limits on me. Don't ever put limits on me, Henry Wright. I can resurrect your son, Harold Michael Wright, de dead at uh, age 26. I can bring him up. You wanted him to come back to me for to be in the church with you. I have kept him for eternity. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to knock the ruler out of you. I'm going to remove any negotiation from you, don't negotiate with God. Amen. You come to me with the problem, I'll handle it. Praise God. Praise God. And Jairus stands there, his mouth flopped open. Jesus lays hands on her. He even tried to cooperate with Jairus, lays hands on her, takes her hand, and then says the words that Jairus never had the faith to pray for. Rise up, little girl. And she gets up. Amen. I can hear Jairus' heart beating. I can hear joy, feel joy flooding his mind and soul. I can see the saints of God standing on the sea of glass, recognizing that the God we serve is not limited by anything. When all of God's children come up out of their graves, stand before the master of all eternity, when the people of God recognize God always had in mind for you, resurrection. Resurrection! Resurrection! That was a good sermon. That was a good sermon to the glory of God. Not because I preached it, but because God wants us to understand, folk, we serve a limitless Savior. That's why we don't have to worry about being in charge, running. We serve a limitless Savior. Tis so sweet <laughs> to trust in Jesus. Come on, somebody. Just to take him at his word. Huh? Just to rest upon his promise, just to know, children, thus saith the Lord, Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I've proved him o'er and o'er, Jesus, Jesus, precious, Jesus, oh, for grace <laughs> to trust him more. The children are going to sing it for me now. I call them children because I'm old enough to be their grandfather. They're going to sing it for me now. You just listen as we claim this. We claim this. The rulers are gone now. The rulers are quiet. Listen. Hallelujah. To trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word. What a hymn. Just to rest upon his promise, just to know the same.
Thank you. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him more. I don't know what you're dealing with. I don't know why you came to camp meeting. But Jesus knows what you're dealing with, and he knows why he inspired you to come here. The camp meeting's almost over. We spent the week talking about the Word of God shaping our story. I can't wait to stand on the sea of glass and talk to Jairus. <laughs> Henry, he's going to say, I was such a fool, such a proud, arrogant fool. But Jesus taught me. He closed my mouth. He brought me to the point where I had nothing to say. And then he told me, just believe. Maybe as a Jairus or two here tonight. And God's been trying to shape you into what he wants you to be. The camp meeting has worked on you and you have felt that something special is happening. And you want to claim that. <clears throat> this is not an appeal to join the church. It's an appeal to capture the shaping experience that the Word has done for you during this week. You want to capture it. Something special happened and you want to cap you don't want to lose it. This time I'm not going to ask you all to stand. But if my appeal fits you, I want you to get up and come down here. Who'll come first? You're singing the next verse. to trust in Jesus, just to trust His cleansing love, just in simple faith to plunge me, me the healing cleansing from Sing the chorus with them. I can't come with well, then just stand where you are if this is what you need to do remember those who are coming and standing are saying something special happened for me during this camp meeting I latched on to the theme I realized that God has been shaping me through his word the problem is there's too much ruler in me there's just too much ruler in me and God He's going to have to back some of us into a corner like Jairus. We have no answers. We have no plan. We have no solution. In that moment, we will discover how powerful God is. Claim it. Claim it. Third verse. I love this verse. I'm so, I'm so glad. glad. Yeah.
Father in heaven. I stand speechless. <laughs> speechless at you. This brother came with a sick daughter looking for a healing. Presumptuous in his approach, you left him vacant and hurting. And then while vacant and hurting, you said, believe. Woo. Drug him to his house and then gave that brother what he would never had the faith to ask for. <laughs> You resurrected his daughter. Oh, my goodness, Jesus. Jesus, precious Jesus. Mm, mm, mm. Just seems to me, folk, we ought to sing that chorus one more time. Forgive me. You'll be all right. You'll, you'll be home safe. You'll be fine. Come on, Jesus, Jesus, say it. it we thank you for it I hope that Henry Wright didn't get in your way tonight and that the spirit was able to do its work we got something to hold on to we'll never quite see Jairus the same again but we join him in thanking you for resurrection power In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I'm going to take speaker's privilege tonight, and unless they have announcements to make, y'all go home. God bless you. See you in the morning. All right. Well, good evening. We've just heard a riveting message by Henry Wright, prolific speaker, author, preacher, counselor, uh, educator, and he has talked to us about Jairus and waiting in that gap of waiting for God to do something and not trying to hold on to our own agenda and our own itinerary. Wow. Unpack that for us, Nathan. Well, you know, I was just thinking, what ways do uh, I want Jesus to act in my life, but then I want to tell Jesus how it is that he's supposed to do that. That, that's, that was something that I really appreciated, right? Like, this man is a ruler. He's used to being in charge. He's used to directing, directing things, and yet he wants Jesus to come and act. And I thought, I thought the point that he made that, that when, when he kind of stepped back, instead of getting what he wanted, when he was telling Jesus what he wanted, he wanted a healing, but he got a resurrection. And so, um, anyway, I, I found that to be really meaningful. And you know, I was thinking, Nathan, as he was speaking, that uh, we know that he was a ruler, and he was the ruler of the Sanhedrin, correct? Uh, synagogue. A synagogue. So that maybe would be equivalent to, what, a conference president today? Yeah, or maybe like a church pastor or church something. Church pastor. Yeah. And uh, as Henry Wright uh, brought out, he was someone that was used to having his own agenda, perhaps helpers, uh, perhaps uh, someone that was a type A personality. He was used to having his Excel sheets all in a row and, and, and having things his way. And he wanted to be able to command Jesus, if you will, and say, get over there now. This right, is urgent. Right. Put this on the urgent list. And then, and then in that urgent moment, he, he has this, this sick lady who, who delays the whole thing. And I love that line um, there where it says that she told Jesus the whole story. And I just cracked up because when my wife, when, when my wife's like, what happened? I'll say to her, 
oh, you know, da 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 da. And I mean, I'm over in 30 seconds. And, and that, I, that was the most funny. I think that was the funniest piece because he's saying, women, when, when, when women tell the whole story, oh, man. when you're my gonna... wife tells what happened, it's like, this happened, this happened, this. I mean, she is every last detail. <laughs> so I just totally thought that was hilarious. Yes, yes. Uh, um, he went but I can imagine being that, that ruler of the synagogue, right? And it's like, I've got my daughter and she's sick and, and I've got the master. He's going to come and he's going to heal her. And, and, then, and then this lady comes and she tells this, this agonizingly slow story, telling the whole of it and and I could I just felt that that sense of anxiety and frustration and yes all right yeah. well we will have Henry Wright up again tomorrow and uh, we are looking at um, in the morning we have a delightful segment delightful delightful segment and that will be a SoCal history segment with Grant Mitchell uh, Joe Reynolds and Charles White. Now, Grant Mitchell is someone that has written a book, uh, Voices in the Wilderness. It's about the journey to Soquel. So it's the pre-camp meeting portion of before we bought Soquel in 1948. He goes into the history of California Conference back before we were even Central California Conference. So for listeners that don't understand, uh, there was not northern and central and southern. There was just one blanket conference in California. And so Grant's book encompasses that portion of history. And then um, the other person, Pastor Joe Reynolds, who's a retired Cal central California uh, pastor, will give the portion of history from 1948 on when we purchased the land. And then Charles White is a representative of the White Estate. And Charles White it will actually present to us some aspects of James and Ellen White's visits to California. And they oh, actually cool. loved California. When I was briefing with them today, they said, do you know that there's a passage in one of Ellen's books saying that it would take a, like, like a sturdy effort of the Lord to remove them and to keep them from California. <laughs> so uh, I guess once you, uh, they say that uh, if a pastor is asked to go to Alaska or something, he may think twice. But if he's asked to go to California, it's the Lord's will. It's really tempting to think it's Very the Lord's instantly. will. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So we have that segment up tomorrow, and it's a historical portion, a historical narrative. You will be cool history. To buffs will not want to miss that. That's going to be cool to hear kind of just that big picture history of California, history of Adventism in California. That'll be fun. That'll be fun. It, it, we have old photos. We have old uh, recorder issues. Yeah. We have some old history segments. And if those of you have been following us all week will appreciate that. Uh, and this is, of course, the booth, the 48 booth commemorating the year that SoCal Camp and it was you know, established. You know what I hope that we get out of that, that historical segment? I hope that we look at the sacrifice, the commitment, um, and that we kind of take inspiration from those people. And I mean, you know, it, it was a heroic effort to get to California from the East and uh, to build a life here. That was, and, and our pioneers did that. And, and I think it'll be, it should be inspiring to us, not just for what they did in the past, but inspiring us to go forward doing great things for the and, Lord. And yes, you're right. And I, I guess I fear, the only fear I would have, and I love celebrating legacies and history, the only fear I would have is that we only are looking back. We need to look forward yeah. and draw from the strength that those pioneers gave us. Go forward with the, the lessons that were taught by that generation, the sacrificial giving, the volunteerism. We, we heard from a man this week that whose father had volunteered most of a year to help build this auditorium and that put it in place. So, I mean, there's there's huge lessons to learn, but we want to look forward in, in how those uh, pieces can teach us for future stories. Yeah, yeah. Uh, also, we want to remind listeners that at the end of camp meeting, uh, SoCal usually uh, collects about a million dollars in evangelism. 
and we want to make sure that we obtain that goal this year as well. We invite you, know, you as listeners to be thinking about your pledge and how you can uh, contribute to the ministries in Central California. You know, I was just going to say, you know, it, it, when we say that SoCal raises a million dollars, it, it, it almost sounds like it's like a magic trick that uh, SoCal does. But it's not really a magic trick. It's, it's actually individual people taking out their checkbooks, going on our app, making those pledges. And so um, I, I just would encourage our, our listeners to uh, and our viewers just to, just to think about how they can support the evangelistic ministry of the Central California Conference. Yeah. And, and they can give online at our app, CCCSGA, and they can also... You can get that at the App Store uh, on uh, Google. Google, Google, Google and Google. Apple. Correct. You okay. can go to the Google Store. You can get the CCC SDA app. You can also give online at Central California Conference website okay. with the online giving portion. Uh, the stories are amazing. Husbands and wives praying together, deciding what they should commit to mm -hmm. pledge. And um, many have come to the same idea together prayerfully. So we have about 30 seconds left. And do you okay. want to remind listeners of our theme? Yeah, yeah. So we've been exploring the theme of His Word shaping our story and the story that is yet to come. And uh, I love how Henry's really reminded us of that. Yes, and brought that home. We would like to thank the constituency of the Central California Conference of the Seventh-day Adventist Church for making this program possible and from viewers just like you. Thank you.